Some people have a preconceived idea that systems in some way stifle creativity. They don't allow people to work at their best because it restricts them and stops them being creative. But I've seen quite the opposite. And today I want to explore that when done right, systems can truly excel or increase productivity and creativity to allow you to create a business that can utilize people's best, most incredible superpowers, whatever they may be, but with keeping things on brand and in line with your company's policies and vision. So the question is this, how do entrepreneurs like us who don't have an endless supply of cash, how do we leverage the best apps, virtual assistants, automation tools and systems to scale our businesses, increase our profits and have more time to do what we love to do each day? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Dr. Steve Day and this is Systemize Your Success. Okay, so as many of these episodes are, this has come from a couple of conversations I've had with clients in recent weeks. And it's all stemmed from the idea that over systemizing something can really stifle creativity or hamper people's ability to work uh, in a productive way or just stress people out. There's certain types of people that you, you throw a system at them, no matter how simple you think it is, it sort of makes them sweat and and hate their job full stop and so how do we strike a balance to ensure that you're getting predictable uh, and reproducible outcomes so your clients expectations are met in a consistent and predictable way and that you as the business owner get what you hope you're going to get no matter who it is that's doing the work especially when we're working with creatives now, on the flip side, if you're talking about general admin, about you know, computer-based type stuff, like logical thinking stuff, I mean, then systems sort of lend themselves really easily. If you want someone to do X, Y, then Z every single time, and you don't want them to be creative, then it's easy for us to see how having a set process, some guidelines, some operation manuals, videos, checklists, etc., that can really help those sorts of processes be consistent and get the same result time and time again, no matter who is doing it. But where some people fail to, uh, what they fail to understand is actually having a systemized approach to even creative tasks can not only standardize the outcomes in a way that's predictable, but giving people room to be creative. But it can also free up those creatives to have more time and energy to be even more creative. Now, let's dig into that because um, I've, I I know when I talked about with my clients, it took me a few minutes to explain what the hell I was talking about. And so I'm going to do exactly that with you today. So here we're talking about, let me give some examples actually. So here, let's just for say, we've got somebody who is doing some graphic design for us. You could say to somebody, and this actually happened today in my uh, in one of my meetings where I'd ask someone to create some logos for our new community platform. And they had gone and created some very beautiful logos, but they hadn't used our brand guidelines. And so they picked colors which aren't actually on brand. And that is a great example of how having a simple system such as our brand guidelines saying which fonts we use, the colors we use, how the logo can be used, etc., that allows a creative to be creative, but within the constraints of your business and the way it needs to be presented to the world. So that's one sort of element of it. So quite an obvious one for graphic design, but you're not sort of telling someone exactly what to do, showing them this is how you create a logo, this is where you put this here and you move this image here. Like we're not going into that much detail, we're expecting the creative, in this case, the graphic designer, to know how to use the software that they are gonna to use to create the image and we're going to lean into them to come up with the creative ideas about you know, how we can uh, convey the feeling or the type of emotion we're trying to evoke by having this particular graphic here or just making something look cool. But we need them to do it in a certain way. So that's one example. Now, if we could take that example a little bit further, say you ask your graphic designer to create a logo, for, say, for example, and they go away and do it. They've created that logo, but no one on the team knows about it. And they've got to then give that back to whoever it is that asked them in order for them to continue using that. So we need to 
save that particular logo in a specific folder that's accessible to the team. You need to have a standardized, systemized way of naming that file so it can easily be found and ensure that it's saved in the correct sizes, for example, or in the correct type. So it's a JPEG, it's a GIF, it's a, uh, a mob file, whatever, if you're creating videos. And so these guidelines, again, these systems allow the creative to do their creative bit, but in a way that allows your team to access the work afterwards, to use it where they need to use it, for it to be the right dimensions, etc., for you to actually get, the, you know, be able to, well, to be able to use it, basically. And so um, this, is, this is just part of our system. And then we can plug that into, say, a production pipeline for our podcast or for a blog post. And so in our real life production uh, or promotion pipeline for our podcast, I should say, we do some repurposing of the content. We create short videos, we create graphics and thumbnails that go on onto uh, posts or onto the imagery for the actual uh, artwork, for example. But all of these things happen without my involvement, I don't have to tell anybody going to go and do them. And the rest of the team, so the copywriter and the podcast manager, know how to find all that stuff when it's been created by the graphic designer because it's part of a system. So the system kicks off and say the copywriter does their bit of work. It's then handed over or a task is delegated as part of the system to the graphic designer to do their work, be creative, but then follow those guidelines like I've just described to make sure that it's saved in the right place, in the right format, so that the next person in the chain in this case, maybe the podcast manager who's actually going to post the the the, the, uh, the the post into social media, or it could be the the copywriter who's going to create the blog post and post it onto a blog. Like whoever it is, they know where to find it and use that next piece of work. Another really good example I think to dig into is salespeople. Now, salespeople typically aren't the best at systems. They are often quite extrovert types. They're quite good at just, just cracking on with stuff. You give them a list of phone numbers to ring and they'll go through them, they'll ring them, they'll have great conversations, they'll build that rapport, you know, they'll get people excited about your program, your course, your product, whatever it is. But then the follow-up sometimes can be more challenging to get them to do consistently. We need them to, for example, send follow-up emails, to send messages, to we need them to create notes or add a task to follow them up in a couple of weeks' time. Whatever it is, we need all of these follow-up pieces for the the system, for the, for the business, to continue to function with or without that particular person's involvement. If that person's not there in the future, or you have a sales team and you need people to communicate between them between each other, or it may be that actually the end result of a particular sales call triggers off you know, a client onboarding. You make a sale, great, then the onboarding of that client needs to happen seamlessly. The conversations that have been had in that sales call should really be passed over to the client success manager so that that person, that client, is then onboarded in a uh, seamless way that the that feels to the client as if there's actually been some good communication about the behind the scenes. And it's not like they're starting from scratch when they have maybe an onboarding call and then they've got to sort of explain everything all over again. So it's all these things that make a better client experience or just help you as a business track things, report things, to be able to you know, focus on KPIs, etc. But all this data, this transfer of information, this handover, all has to happen consistently to enable that to actually work. And so if you ask a typical salesperson, and forgive me for any salespeople listening to this, if this isn't you, uh, but from my experience, this is some of the people I've worked with, that they've struggled to sort of do like all of that admin type stuff because they just want to get on and make the sale. They want to get on and meet people because that's what gets them in their flow. And that is absolutely brilliant. And that's what I need in a salesperson because actually that that's a, a skill which I which doesn't particularly get me in my flow and get me hugely excited. I love talking with clients. I love bringing them on board. But the 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 whole typical sales process, like the cold calling side of things and the chasing people up, all that sort of stuff, that's not something that actually gets me excited. Whereas other people actually really actually energizes them and that's what they want to do all day. So we need different skill sets in the business. So we can't expect everybody to be absolutely brilliant at doing admin, attention to detail, complete to finish a tight work. And we we need the, the flip side of that as well, which is often in my, exa in my um, experience, people like salespeople. And so how do we get the salesperson to have all of that energy put into doing what they need to do in order to make sales, which is 
the primary reason that we actually employ them, obviously, but to do that in a way that enables the rest of the team, the company and the client to be able to function at their highest level. And also all that, as I said before, the reporting and everything needs to, uh, to get done, KPIs and all the rest of it. And so in this example in our company, so we have a sales pipeline set up in our CRM. And so when we have a new sales lead that comes in, then the salesperson would then contact that person, whatever method it is. I'm not going to go into details of a sales process here. But once they've done that initial contact, there'll be an outcome. And that outcome may be there's a follow-up call booked. It may be that there's a three-month follow-up scheduled that we're going to just ring them back. There may be an email series that needs to go out to them because we promised them some information. Whatever the outcome of that is, the more we can systemize those next steps so that the salesperson simply needs to, in our example, move the client in, uh, in the sales pipeline line from one stage to the next stage and then that then triggers off using automation a list of activities and tasks that are assigned and that emails or messages that are sent or notifications or zaps or whatever it is that happens if that happens automatically so all that salesperson needs to do to actually tick like nine out of ten of the boxes is to move the task from one stage to the next then that's a huge amount of admin you've just taken off the person who hates admin put in some admin support for that salesperson to do all of that stuff they hate, organize it through using the stages in the pipeline that this particular sales lead is up to. And now you've got an absolutely brilliant system utilizing the very best abilities of your salesperson and the very best abilities of your, your operations admin person in order to get the result that you want. You're not forcing the salesperson to have to do stuff that really they find quite difficult, not as in intellectually difficult, but just from an energy perspective, they don't get energy from doing that type of work, it actually drains them, and therefore it's not the best use of their time and the best use of your money to pay them to do that because they won't do it as efficiently simply because it's not the kind of stuff that they love to do. And if you get this and understand that the system is there to support the creative or the salesperson or whatever it is to do their work to the highest possible standard, to use their energy at the thing that they are really actually paid to do, the thing that they've got the experience, the knowledge and the expertise in doing and what actually will will um, not inversely will uh, will end up making you money in your company. That's absolutely brilliant. So put some systems, put some admin support in, and now you've got a team that is actually much more productive. So the, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole or whatever that is. Some, I can't remember the, yeah, some, I think that's about, that, that's about right. And so the team working together is actually much more productive than each individual working on their own in a silo. And these are just a couple of examples of where Given the illustration, hopefully you can see how the system is not only you know, necessary for your business to function so that every client, for example, and another example, sorry to, to jump around, but for the salesperson is if you just say to the salesperson, go and ring that person and make the sale, they're just going to do it on however they want to. What they actually really would like in most cases is some structure. Well, how does that sales call go? They need a, a sales script. They need the supporting literature to understand about the products, the services that you offer, the discounts they're allowed to actually give this person, what room, wriggle room is there for negotiation, what bonuses can they be thrown in to sweeten the deal to get that person over the line. All these things are a system, a sales system to support the person to do the one thing they are really good at. That is actually speaking to the person. Their job is the speaking. Your job is to provide them with all of the artillery that they need in order to do their job absolutely brilliantly. And then once they've done their job, whatever the outcome is of that call, whether it's a sale or a follow-up or a long-term nurture, that there is a system in place in order to support them so you're not burdening the salesperson with having to do all of that stuff. And Another great one thing we introduced into our sales process, which was very useful, was that after each sales call, a task is created to remind the salesperson on that day to update the sales notes. So the outcome of that call, the high level outline, is then put into the sales notes so we don't have to go back and you know, find out what's been going on, the history, and have to re like, listen to recordings of calls and all the rest of it, which is all massively time consuming, where it does just take a couple of minutes for the salesperson to make those notes. But if they're anything like me, 
they just move on and forget. And so I need, and I do, I use a lot for myself, and I get my staff to do this for me all the time, is to assign me tasks to remind me to do the things I need to do to make their life easier. And so therefore, this exact example of that, the, the sales call finishes, the salesperson's brain is onto the next sales call. So what we need to do is to pull them back by sending them an alert, maybe a Slack message, assigning a task in the CRM, maybe even adding one to their Asana board. They go through and check at the end of each day, make sure they've actually updated all the notes. However you're managing your team, uh, and their workflow, get that part of the process automated so that happens, so that they're reminded, so therefore there's far less chance they're going to forget because come back you know, in a week later and try to then fill in the notes when they realize they forgot to do it last week isn't actually going to be particularly conducive to getting it done well and they probably have to re-listen to the call or just make stuff up and actually just doing it the same day or even just immediately afterwards even better then that then obviously allows you to get your what you need as a business owner but also allows them to move on with the next call without having to remember to do this stuff because you're going to remind them so great examples of how systems can support somebody in a role which those people typically aren't brilliant at system type stuff but it allows them to then be more creative and use business owner, get every single bit of data and, and reporting and also handover, et cetera, that you need. And the, the, the these are just a couple of examples. I've been in many experience, or experiences, many situations in my life where systems are not only there to help with creativity, but just to help people function, high level people function at even higher level by the same sort of process really, by standardizing the steps in which people take, but leaving the, the, the interpretation of those steps more to the expert. So the, the, the difference here is, like the example I gave at the beginning, when you've got a strict admin task that you want to be done this, the same every single time, then we then we strictly regiment that process. We'll create you know a flowchart for it. We'll have a checklist. Each uh, task on the checklist will have a video explaining it. We'll have an operations manual, what we call the didact, um, to give the person every piece of information they need to do that precisely the same way every single time. There is room for improvement of those things and optimization, but that's a different story. What I'm talking about here is that we, if we have somebody doing something where they are the expert, then what we want to happen is that the client or us as the business to know what steps are going to be taken. So we have a checklist, for example, a high level checklist to say these are the things that have to be done. But where we don't go down to on these sorts of with these working with experts is tell them how to do their job. We tell them we want this result. And as I said before, in this format, for example, this is the outcome we need from you. But how you get from A to B, well, that's up to you. That's what we pay you for. That's your that's you using your brain, your experience, you know, your expertise to then deliver what you think is the best interpretation of what this within the guidelines, within the system that we are providing you. And for, for example, in A&E, we, we had systems, we had checklists. In surgery, there's massive amounts of checklists and systems. Um, and they allow people to make sure that things are done that need to be done, but you don't then go and tell the surgeon like, how to hold the knife and do the cut and all the rest of it, because they've spent years and years training to do that. So it's giving structure, giving a system, but not stifling creativity or stifling expertise and just a couple more examples just to finish off really of things are these types of systems which we have in our business so or actually not just my business in in i've got some for my um, personal life as well so for example i used to do a lot of mountaineering in my 20s late 20s early 30s and so when you're going on a mountaineering trip which is you know creative might not be the right word but it's not exactly a, a systems um driven thing you'll be putting one step in front of the other and you're climbing a mountain but if you get up that mountain and you haven't got everything you need, tough luck. You know, that that is, you've got what you've got because um, uh, you don't have a, an option 
to go back and get something else. So having a systemized approach to planning that trip to know, like, here's my kit list for the base camp. Here's my kit list for camp one. Here's my kit list for camp two. How much food do I need? How much water do I need to take? Actually, probably not any water because you have ice, but anyway, beside the point. Uh, how much fuel do I need for my stove so I can melt the ice to make the water then? Here you go. And so like everything, what, what, what clothes do I need? Do you have different clothes for different altitudes and all the rest of it? So there's huge amounts of planning that goes in. And the more systemized it is, the more chance you've got of reaching your goal, which is obviously to summit the mountain. But if you haven't actually done all that planning and created those systems to get you there, the chance of success if you're just wigging it is far, far um, less. And so I also... I used to run a photographic studio many years ago, which sadly lacked systems. This was really before I started understanding how powerful systems could be. And, and that photographic studio failed. And one of the reasons it failed is, is as I said, we didn't have any systems. We, we were basically winging it. The phot photographer did the photos any which way they seem fit, which is the creative part, if you like, and that's fair enough. But had we been feeding back, you know, the most common photos which sell for the most amount of money, then maybe we would have actually increased the revenue. If we then had a better process for how to actually um, edit those photos and then present them to the client, if we had a sales process that wasn't relying entirely on one individual who had it all in his head, apparently, who was just gifted in sales, what I now know is a sales process can be taught and can be um, it, it, uh, taken on by anybody and who practice they can actually get really good at it within reason then what if I'd known all that before if I'd known about systems for how to you know, follow up with people to, to to increase the sales by actually you know having a process for uh, speaking to them afterwards getting them on the phone you know getting them back in whatever it is if I'd had any of those systems in place in that business then maybe that business wouldn't have failed but I didn't and because I didn't you don't know what you don't know and few other things on my list, and then I'm going to draw this one to a close. So we've got like course templates, for example. So when we're building out courses, we don't just want you know, one course being one way, another course being another way. And I'll hold my hands up. Some of our, our older courses um, in our in our program have a different format because we didn't have a system back then. And we've also we've moved different platforms and it's become unsystemized. So we're now in a process of actually re-standardizing everything. And the way we're doing that is by creating a course migration and of course production pipeline which has a very set standardized way of doing stuff which connects with people like our instructional designer the the, the teacher the lecturer which is often often me the graphic designer the video editor but all of those people who are the creatives experts doing their thing need to work within the guidelines so that at the end result is absolutely standardized so the clients see something that is consistent that they when they are onto the course it makes them feel like they know where they are because it's not like every course is a different format and different layout and so their expectations are met and we're doing it in a way that's on brand and we're delivering a product and a service of high quality that that we want to no matter who is involved in the process of putting it out there so that's it. That's my two cents worth on why I believe systems are not only able to increase and enhance creativity, but they are essential for getting the best, the most value out of your creatives and people who in your business are experts in their own field, but maybe they shouldn't be spending their time doing all the admin or the system stuff because that's not actually what you're paying them the the high big 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 bucks for so to speak but that stuff still needs to be done and so actually creating systems to involve other people or automation is how we can do that effectively so that's it hope you've enjoyed this show if you have please do spread the love and share this with your friends and colleagues and um, please do leave us a review or like us depending on what sort of platform you are listening to this on. And until next time, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Bye.